Hey, Mark. Sorry. No worries. Well, welcome. I was away. I didn't see you come up. This is Aru. He's a fellow comic creator. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah I've, I've seen your stuff, mate. It looks good. Uh, cheers, mate. Yeah, uh, Rico was telling me about you. You're in the UK, right? Pushing all the... Yeah. I'm in Scotland. The <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he gave me a little um, blurb about you yesterday. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> and now we have Estonia, uh, my um, Greek uh, artist, Constino. So he works with me hey. on a supernatural um, series called Templeton. Kind of based around Constantine. Uh, Constantine. Uh, who's one of my favorites and um so we i wrote a Con constantine theory space in fiji a graphic novel and then i i saw them get rid of constantine uh, constantine and bring him into this view and i said yeah i'll never do this for anybody else i'm just going to create my own thing and do templeton and so we've got about three graphic novels on the um outlined i mean the scripts have been written for two and we've done a we did an eight a 10 page a few years back and now we're doing a 40 page and alone then we're going to do a two graphic novels off so that's where we're working on also working on on our plungecomics.com page on pj and shibi which is a bunch of anthropomorphized bears living our uh, bears and animal living in new zealand yeah so that's what he's working on so he's pretty talented there uh, anybody else? Hey, oh my goodness. Hey, Jason, come on, man. Jump in. I think it's going to be like a huge comic fest right now. Live stream because this is Jason Laney. I forgot to mention your name on the webinar on uh, Wednesday, bro. I just I held up your um, comic, uh, your, uh, you know, pande pandem pandemic, whatever, or pandemania and your work. And I was like, what's his name hey, what's his name I, I just couldn't remember like i was kicking myself you feel like i need uh, some of this work I'm yeah. right so yeah oh i'm gonna get on crushes tomorrow make this so that i'm not the biggest here there we go that's fair that's yeah that's much better i was like putting the wrong one in yeah hey mark uh Take it away. Tell us so much about yourself. I'm just going to, excuse me, I'm looking for something and I'll <laughs> let you take over for a bit. Um, uh, yeah. Rico can interview. <laughs> oh, we were just having a yarn about comics before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a Kiwi living in Scotland, uh, writing, uh, creating comic books uh, and making action figures as well. Um, I, uh, I won the. I was lucky enough to win the Miller World Talent Contest back in 2016, and um, that was uh, for the Miller World Annual that came out. And I got a uh, my Hit Girl story got published, and I thought, yeah, that's it. I made it big time, and brilliant. I'm gonna I'm gonna write Batman next. And no, no, that's not how it worked. So um, I spent the next couple of years going around all the UK conventions and the thing about the UK is people are really open and honest with you and they'll help you out if they can. And the, the whole indie creator scene here is absolutely thriving. So there's so many uh, good folk out there that are happy to just sit down and have a pint with you and just talk, talk the shit. And uh, a lot of the conventions here have these trade, it was kind of a trade day slash learning days, learning days. So they'll, um, I think uh, one of them in Glasgow was called Nine Panels. And basically they have all these guest speakers come in and just talk about the actual craft of creating a comic book, rather than talking about the characters and stuff as you, as you would at a convention panel. So uh, I went to Glasgow Comic Con probably 2016, 17, and I'm looking around the room and I'm having pints with Frank Whiteley and David Aha and Goran Parlov and all these huge guys. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And you just, you just don't, unfortunately, don't get that in New Zealand. And um, so for the next couple of months, so they said, what you're going to do is you're going to start small and do short stories and do an anthology and try and get into Future Shock in 2000 AD and all this sort of stuff. And I ignored them all completely and uh, wrote a five issue series, uh, much to my detriment. But what I did manage to do is um, I 
before I launched issue one, I made sure all the art was done for the first five issues. Mm. So all the inked art uh, for this land is complete. So even though issue two is at the printing now, but it's mm. just colors and letters to go for those next three issues. And, you know, when, you, when you're creating stuff, that like, write what you know is in general a, a good rule of thumb. And uh, it was quite weird because it was uh, when Kaikoro had its earthquake, um, I was trying to think of a, a, a story and, and what to do. And uh, in Kaikoro, obviously, the, um, the harbour went up, right? The, the, all the boats in the harbour were um, moored, which is weird because usually earthquakes in New Zealand, shit comes, hey, Jason, how are you? All, all the stuff comes tumbling down, hey. right? Hey. So... I looked at um, what would happen if New Zealand was, you know, changed and the continent of Tuluia Maui or Zealandia, which at the time there was a newspaper article saying New Zealand had the shallowest sea shelf around it. So what, like the hidden eighth continent. So what would happen if that came up and what would happen to the people of New Zealand? And uh, yeah, I created this land and um, it's basically a future New Zealand where everyone's been given the power of the gods. And uh, nice. it it seemed right to me because it is a future New Zealand that the mm. language be would be bilingual. So there's a whole lot of Tereo in there as well. So it's an opportunity for people all around the world to learn bits of Tereo. And I don't ha I don't hammer hammer it over people's heads, but it's just like remember in the Asterix books where even the pirates would speak Latin, or in the X Men books you'd have Nightcrawler and Colossus, you know, chucking in German and Russian words, stuff like that. So uh, I just saw it as a nice opportunity to, so what would this world look like and what sort of languages would it would, would involve? And of course, I'm a Pakeha boy from Hamilton, so I don't know my, I, any, I fuck all Tereo, to be honest. Uh, but one of my good friends, um, she was, um, I, I did uh, a Bachelor of Media Arts degree in Hamilton. Uh, majoring in public relations and advertising, so bullshit for a living. Uh, and one of my good friends who did the course with me, she's fluent in Tarao and uh, does a lot of stuff with um, uh, the ministry uh, down in uh, Wellington. And she helped guide me and I avoid any pitfalls. So there's every every design in the book is done by a New Zealand artists or someone of um, uh, with fucker papa or the, you know Maori descent. Uh, and all the the, mo the mokos on a couple of the couple of them have been designed by New Zealand tattooists, uh, which you know not cheap getting all this stuff done, but uh, it was worth doing to do it right. So we had our first Kickstarter in uh, February, and we raised three and a half thousand pounds, which is just under or over seven New Zealand thousand seven thousand New Zealand. And we had our next one for issue two in April, and that raised about the same amount again, which was for really good. So, Kickstarters are very stressful things, right? But um, it was very lucky. People have obviously bitten the bug and they're, they're into it. So, there's been, I think, about 80% of the people came back from issue one, plus a whole lot of new people came on board as well. So, I was hoping we'd get a few more in New Zealand. But it's I'm I'm still very happy. So there's only about twenty five or thirty New Zealand that bought it. Same amount in Australia, and then it's a fifty fifty split between the UK and uh, the US, which is interesting. So out of about the hundred and eighty, I think you're looking at about seventy from the US and seventy from the UK, and then about thirty from Aussie and thirty from New Zealand, and then a, all around the world. So where is it? There is a book. Yay! We need so some um, comic shops to issue one up. done, and issue two is at the printers right now, and issue three will be kickstarted in August. But um, mm. if anyone is interested, you can uh, go on to arahacomics.com and order them, um, or wait till the next Kickstarter in, uh, Aroha, in right? August and get all three delivered at once. It's a hard one because I said all five issues were completed. People are like, oh, I'll just wait till it's all done because then I'll save on postage. But I need to get three done to get four done to get five done sort of thing. So it's um, – and postage is just sucks. It just sucks. It's postage anywhere yeah. around the world at the moment is just bloody awful, as I think we all know. Yeah. Um, but uh, It's around about five – 
it's around about five right, bucks. We're looking at um, I might be shipping um, a whole lot of books in a big bundle and then getting them see what prices to ship it a whole lot in one box to New Zealand and then distributed for, via New Zealand NZ Post. Well, that'd be so, cool. I don't know if that's cheaper or not yet. In Australia, it works out like a couple of pounds cheaper. So I'm not even sure if it's worth doing that and and giving someone more work to do. But <laughs> there are work there are workarounds. But um, it's been really good and like it's crazy. We had a, we had a review done by this 13 uh, year old Irish boy. He's got a YouTube channel and he's he's into his comics and he does all these interviews of all these famous artists and stuff. And uh, he managed to pick up my comic, and I've never seen it was just perfect. Just seeing this kid so into it, and he says he knows more Toreo now than he knows, he knows um, Gaelic, uh, <laughs> which was bloody hilarious. And just to see the enthusiasm on kids' faces, uh, in the in the grand scheme of things, I'd love for someone like Scholastic to pick it up and just chuck it on the bookshelf when it's all done as a graphic novel. But I, I haven't even bothered to approach them yet because I just want to get the book done why would, first, um and then maybe why would you, you want know, to go with uh someone like a scholastics rather than do, do a graphic novel as a kickstarter complete set yourself if you're already putting out and people know you through kickstarter as an independent creator as such and of course you want to you know be it out there and everywhere else in shops and all that yeah. after having put out and gotten the support from Kickstarter to be able to, uh, you know, be an independent creator, independent creator. Wouldn't you want to put all those five issues together as a trait and put that back up on um, on and everybody? Hey, come and support my damn trade. You can now have extra pieces of work in my damn trade. Yeah. Why would you want to go with Scholastics, who will just eat you up? As uh, we've known, they'll eat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And take your problem. Um, because ultimately, I really want to see it on um, school libraries throughout New Zealand, and it's something that could be an evergreen project. And I think uh, I, you can hear myself echoing back to myself here. Um, uh, do you want to bring it? Like on your, on your speaker, whichever one you're get, you through, just uh, turn your speaker down. There we go. Um, how's it? Yeah, how's it's that? something that I would like to see, not just in New Zealand schools, but potentially globally as well. And it just, sounds ridiculous. It's not this whole project. If it was about money, I wouldn't be doing it because I've spent, I think we'd last count about, close to 25,000 pounds on it already. Mm. Um, so money isn't the end goal here. It's about, I just want the book to be in the right place. Ultimately, especially when you're doing your first few books and stuff, you're still creating a name for yourself. You're still trying to get an audience to back you and get behind you. Mm. Um, I learned a lot from the Kickstarter and um, even though in the first Kickstarter I had a lot of friends back me, um, they didn't quite, they didn't all follow up for the next one. And there was a bit of confusion because Kickstarter for number one and two was so close together as well. Uh, and when you look at social media, some people think, oh, Mark's just talking about the same thing as well. So I think um, using Kickstarter to build a, a, a voice and recognition for the book, and then once it's complete, I don't mind taking it to a bigger publisher. They might not want it. Um, mm. I, I, I believe in the book. I believe it's bloody good. And um, I think it's certainly worth someone doing it. But um, well, I think it's about that visibility, eh? Because, yeah. like, yeah. as a powerful tool, Kickstarter, and then getting with Scholastic and getting it seen everywhere is a bigger mm. gift than making money off of, like, one graphic yeah. novel or five issues. Absolutely. Yeah. I, hopefully, there'll be enough left in the bank to pay for the next book. <laughs> but, well, that's uh, what you—that's what you aim for, right? Yeah, yeah. But what happened actually? What happened? The first Kickstarter it overperformed. <laughs> so I thought I was only going to do a small print run of a hundred, and no, 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 mm. two hundred. So that doubled the uh, price. Well, not quite double yeah. the price, as you know. But um, I ended up having a dip. I was always going to put a bit of my money into it as well, but it was a lot more than I thought. And there's little things like setup costs that 
and in the UK at the moment, I don't know if you guys are having this problem, but bags and boards are rare as hen's teeth. Oh yeah, you know? there's none here. So the price of bags and boards just for for packaging and stuff is just it's just gone through the roof. Uh, mm. And also, um, I've used proper comic mailers instead of um, instead of these cardboard envelopes. Mm. I think I don't know if any of you guys. I've been sending out the proper um, Gemini packers. These yeah, those do a good job of getting it there safe. Right. Yeah, so make, I'm out of those at the moment, so I'm trying to figure out who can supply me, because I need to run about 200 of those for myself. You'd have to go to a comic shop, because Diamond yeah. do Diamond sell them. Diamond, I don't know. Is New Zealand still under Diamond distribution? I think Diamond's dead in the water. I, I think um, with what they're doing with DC and Marvel, I think haven't they gone through yeah. Scholastic or something like that? I uh, think random, Diamond's yeah, still on for Marvel, isn't it? Marvel. Yeah, DC is out. Yeah, Penguin, Penguin Random House. Okay, so everyone except for DC, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but Diamond still have international. So for comic books in the UK, it all still goes through Diamond, for example, Diamond UK. Mm. So DC don't have another option here. It all so that, but I don't know. New Zealand, Australia might be different or it might still be diamond doing those international it, orders it's, it's luna sure. now for dc yeah. it's like oh, it a little now. company okay. yeah. yeah so but diamond do sell by the pallet load uh the proper Gemini, they call them gemini hackers you know so and that's the other thing too is when you do a kickstarter you got to make sure everything fits into the large mail slot large letter yeah because as soon as you yeah. get a small parcel your prices go up. So I, um, and I did myself no, dirty in the last Kickstarter as well. Yeah, the 10 so, mil. Mm. Is it? Oh, yeah, that much. Somebody. <laughs> no put, more than that 10 mil. Yeah, I put international um, shipping for UK shipping on one reward and UK uh -huh. shipping on international shipping. So internationally, I'm stuffed and I'm ch overcharged and refunding people on. Um, on the UK shipping for one of the rewards. So it's Oops. just, geez, you can't change it after it's locked in the Kickstarter. You yeah. can refund people, but you can't put your hand out again, you know? And one thing with Kickstarter, especially in New Zealand, uh, people were really keen to back me and stuff. They weren't familiar with it, you know? Cause it is mm. expensive for uh, Kickstarting stuff to New Zealand and getting stuff, you know, postage is the same. And they were, they, people yeah. were a bit put off because when you go and back something on Kickstarter now, this big warning saying there is no guarantee that this will be fulfilled yeah. and here's me like it's here it's done <laughs> yeah so some people are, if you haven't been involved in kickstarters before it's very off-putting what they do now and especially since and the other thing is you put in the price this is the reward and then at the end of at the bottom oh yeah by the way there is the postage so people might be keen on the reward yeah. and oh what no 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 no, no. but yeah. you know that's yeah, so I've, I've probably taken a bath on the second Kickstarter as well. So I think we've lost money on that, even though we've done a thousand pounds more than reward just for a few postage things. And again, I was always going to be still putting our own money into the book as well. Um, because the other thing, I would have loved to have a New Zealand artist on the book, but I didn't. Um, and that came down to budget and availability because it's a, you know, we took 140 pages. And that was a commitment over, um, and I, w I managed to work with PR, who's absolutely brilliant, um, who's a Polish artist. So all, all the design work was done by Jews and stuff, but um, where's, the, where's the number two? There we go. He's great. Blow him up, big Ari. Yeah. Love this um, let me figure that out. Oh. I'll keep that up, Mac. <laughs> I'll make the full screen. Hold on. Thank you. Just give me one sec. But yeah, so PR was brilliant, but it comes any Kiwi artist I was looking there at go. couldn't commit to a long run. Um, so, but we've managed to get pinups from a few guys as well. So, you know, Nick Mulapola uh, did an amazing pinup for us, and he did that like three or four years ago. Actually, where is it? It's here somewhere. Uh, it's got great got, color in it. Yeah. My God, Craig, Craig Peterson, who lives in Spain, he did it's a pinup for us. Um, Leo Artbro, who's an Auckland uh, artist, 
uh, by Silas. Mm. He, he did a pin up for us. So try so to get man guard inspired, would you say? Like that, that? to yeah, me, oh, like yeah. so, very. What, what happened for me was I, when I won the Miller World thing, I went back to Melbourne for my brother's wedding and then went to all the comic shops in Melbourne and then we stopped in Singapore on the way home. Singapore's got a great comic book scene. Went down all the comic shops there and I said, what, what are people into? And they said, kids, comics and manga are really growing. And I know Kiwis love their Dragon Ball Z and, their, and a lot of stuff from, like I like my Joe Madureira X-Men from the 90s and all that sort of stuff. And I think there's a lot of love. So I wanted something manga-ish slash cartoonish. There you go. Brilliant. And that's, um, and I think something like that, especially you know, grabbing kids' eyes. So I got a whole lot of mates who are teachers as well. So I made sure I sent PDFs off to them and they've shared them with their classrooms and stuff. And the, you know, the feedback's been really good. But it's the kind of story that can be good for kids, but there's a whole lot of other levels there. Um, and I've said this on a couple of pods before, like I've got like 140 folders of world building. So I know everything from what currency to, you know, what people wear and what areas and what regions, uh, how, how um, this, the science of this new world, because technology is basically. Dead. Let me. Uh, so. All right. So let me pop in some writer to writer um, questions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, because a lot of people just see when you uh, the art on the page and that's all they see and they read the story and they don't see all the hours and hours and the sleepless nights and the thinking that goes behind each character you put out how yeah. they're going to what they're going to look like uh how old they're going to be what uh whether they're going to be male or female or they're going to be maori or Pakia or english or european or from yeah. greek it's, you know wherever in the world what their dress is going to look like what the, how their hair is going to look like so now you're going into coins and stuff more greater details and you're doing um tons and tons of backgrounds what we call back matter and world building uh, you know what people are more used to now world building and you know yeah. who relates to who which part of their family they are how does a mo uh, if they have cars does that run on, you know, because the future, does it run on gas? Does it run on, you know, uh, bean oil or whatever? So I think, it's, how do I think it's really important to do all those things because you don't want to write yourself into a corner. And uh, like mm. a lot of these things will never actually be put to page. But if so, if I'm challenged on something I've done or I, or I do find myself stuck, you know, I look at the rules of, that I've set in place for myself. I can work around that. You know, you can always look you can always really change things up if you want to but if you start yeah. from a, a, a place and a structure where the where the foundations are strong um you know you can you can build off that and it's important mm. that the artist as well can be comfortable knowing if, if they want to refer to that stuff they can um but they don't have to so one thing especially when i'm mm. when you're creating the script um i do i kind of do marvel style first which is sort of like a plot breakdown, then a page breakdown of what 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 the, what the acts are going to be in each issue and chapter, um, and then a page by page breakdown, and then I do the scripting at the end. That's how I do it. Or if a, if a scene comes to me, I'll just write it out the the conversation, and then build that into the page. Or, or edit the crap out of it more than likely and strip it from uh, like a hundred bubbles to 20. Um, and there are certain rules if you, you can put, there are no rules in comics, but if you do yeah. give yourself certain structure, the overall product is more finished and consistent. Uh, things like uh, word balloons, I would not have a word balloon with more than 32 words in it. So you can still have, I'm not going full Bendis. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, he's, got, well, talk about can, that. He's actually going put, less and less now. On one page, yeah, there'll be yeah, only yeah. about like maybe ten words on a whole friggin' page. I'm going, yeah, you just cheated here and let artists do all the work for. Yeah, yeah. and the, save one your key thing is One key thing I do with the artist is the start of every any script I give to an artist. I say, I say, um, right. I, I often give very detailed, I want this point of view, I want a tight shot, a mid shot, a wide shot, I want it looking up, mm. uh, a bird's eye view. But I say at the start, 
I very detailed in my scripts and my, my camera angles. But if you have a better idea, please do it. You know, and we'll yeah. talk about it. So uh, when you get when the layouts come in, they're either exactly what I said they were going to be, or they're a bit different. And we talk about why and whether it works better or not. And at, at the end of the day, it's not just about me. Uh, it's about mm. the team as a whole. And if everyone can, you know, if you have a great colorist, colorist, you know, just really. Uh, Liza Bienaventura, who uh, does the colours on this land, is just absolutely incredible. Uh, she does stuff for uh, Dynamite and Xenoscope and I uh, mm. want to say Antarctic and Scout Comics. So a lot of indie stuff. So, you know, she's a full-time yeah. colourist. Um, Hassan, the letterer, uh, he does stuff for Image Comics, you know. It's fucking not cheap, mm. but he's a total pro. <laughs> you know, I, could, I, have, I could letter it myself, but I... Yeah. Two things. I'm leaning on his name a little bit. Yep, because he's yeah. he's well known within comic circles. But uh, he is absolutely brilliant. I mean, I um, for review purposes, I lettered issues two to five, and three, four, five are in black and white. Mm. And uh, you know, I was like, holy crap! One thing, it is worth learning how to letter because at least then you realise, yeah, I've said too much here. How can I possibly fit all these word balloons here? And then you see his version compared to my version, and it's just so much better. And it's not, it's just little things like placement and pacing, you know? So yeah. he's, he's been given carte, carte blanche, free reign to edit the word balloon. So even though when I type in a script, I do break them down into sort of word balloon placements, because he's a pro and he knows what he's doing. I said, look, if you want to mix things up, mix it up. And we'll talk. And again, if I don't like it or whatever, we'll talk about it. I haven't changed anything yet um, that he's done because it's always better. And I mean, that's the thing. Comics is, is about collaboration. Um, it is The book is 100% creator owned by myself. Uh, that's right. mainly because further down the line, I do want more Kiwis involved in it. Um, if we can get there. But any comics doesn't pay a lot so no pr for example he works on about four or five books a month uh, a week sorry so he with me he was guaranteed two pages a week for two years yeah so that was guaranteed income for him so yeah. he was happy to do that um and then, because it took two years to draw the whole thing, even though 140 pages, technically, you think 140 days, there were pages, yeah. uh, double page spreads that he put more detail in. So I paid him for three pages rather than two pages because it was worth that. It was like, this is the money shot it's worth doing. That doesn't usually right. happen. Um, but that was a choice I made because I wanted to get, get the best out of this. Mm. Uh, and I've had a lot of help from... Um, so and and as I say, all the design work were, were done with guys with Flocka Papa and um, uh, the Toreo translator Trent. Uh, he works for uh, Waikato DHB and never worked read a comic before in his life. But you know he's a, <laughs> he's a, an official translator. So he just he just had to go in and sense check if I'd use the right Toreo words that were um, would you work in a bilingual sentence. Because so, sure. you, know, you can go to MaoriDictionary.com and type something in and get a word, but it's still not, might not be the right yeah, word to work. use within the flow of a sentence and stuff. Um, but he was, uh, you know, like the most rewarding thing has been people coming back and going, fuck yeah, we needed something like this. This is great. Because, yeah, that's why I think it'd be, like, obviously, New Zealand's going through a re-emergence and of uh, embracing its uh, Maori culture in Taraya, which like didn't exist when I, I was think, growing up. Um, we had, we had, it's I think it's, with the um, it's the um, it's the animus driving that because uh, the reason I say that is because one of my friends who I went to film school with, right, uh, for a degree, he uh, he's got a a animated style of stories he wanted he wants he's a married so he wants to bring his into right so yeah that's one thing that thing is we've got a whole generation that's grown up on Yu-Gi-Oh, -Oh, dragon ball z and all that but yep that's, that's there but there is new forms of storytelling that's coming through japan through manga that's actually to 
what can be done. You know, like yeah. this, okay, right? Getting transplanted to another world out of the blue, you know, um, in a new world my, with my mobile phone type story. And, you know, Batum, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, or even, you know, stuff like uh, friggin' uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, about the old gods and all this and monsters and all that. And that's all part of mythology in, in New Zealand, right? And New Zealand culture. So, well, then, then you got all these people who are actually thinking about Terrell and thinking, why can't we tell our stories in this medium that's called animation as well? Yeah. And I think that's where, when um, Rika was saying about your art, whoever, there's a Pierre who wrote that, who did the artwork, looks very manga-ish. But that's not actually yeah. the word. It should be just animated. Looks more animated yeah, yeah. style. Yeah, it, it's not it's not the, not manga, manga has been superhero people style. People who don't know people who don't know manga have pigeonholed it into a certain thing because, that's it. and I think a lot of it, a lot of it, people see the, the animation like the Saturday morning and the the cartoons. So you. You know, all through the '90s and 2000s, you had your Pokemon's and your Digimon's and your Yu-Gi-Oh's and stuff. So they 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 see yeah. that as manga. It ain't manga. You know, that's that's selling toys. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. basically yeah, that's basically what it comes down to. It's like I mean, uh, Rico said this is what's mangaish. <laughs> yeah. You know, but your your one is more the layout and text. You're inspired by yeah. it, and it yeah. shows. Well, yeah. no, it's My, because. Of the, the layouts in our book are very uh, U.S. standard, so I do I'd say yours is yeah. like Western manga's feel yeah. to me. Yeah. So the, yeah. the 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 art style is trying to be a cartooning animated manga ish, but not mm. fully leaning on it. There's some mm. uh, panels that he do is, is very manga ish though, which is quite cool. Yeah. But the overall the way the story is written and paced is very U.S. style. So I'll always do right. page two and three as a double page splash, like get people right into the action. You know. So read the page, oh yeah, yeah, and then bang, and then that is exciting when you hit that page. Yeah, and the final yeah. page, the final page will always be a splash page as well. Um, mm. We've managed to, and I do a few things like Bendis is quite good at this as well. Like you'll do a splash page across the top, and then mm. a whole lot of little panels down the bottom. So you've still got a big impact page, and then a whole lot of little stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we do it when we see Auckland for the first time. Um, uh, where's the book gone? Bloody hell! No, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's a we're set a scene, and you see a lava-covered Auckland now called Axland. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. name. Who came up with that? Um, yeah. The and then down the bottom, there's a conversation happening. So yeah, yeah. I tried American style formatting, but using uh, an animated style of cartooning mm -hmm. or artistry with hints and influences of man manga within that so it's so. basically more loose lines than tight lines figuratively because you're looking like when they look at uh when you look at superman and batman right they uh oh, i, I feel it's more the it's character not... design from what yeah, from what so i've seen it, like the the more look more realistic characters in the art style yeah. than they do with manga and anime because it's more looser and more uh anime i'm sorry cartoon based illustration yeah, and, and, yeah. And i suppose it depends it, it also depends on the artist they've been a bit they dc mm. definitely have a house style of artists yeah. that they like to have and it's quite mm. formatted uh marvel have been all over the place in years you look at guy you know oh. you can you can never <laughs> argue chris chris but chris Bacello, who did generation yeah. x and done spider-man he's done avengers and stuff his shit's fucking out there if you actually compare yeah. it to normal stuff. Uh, Scotty Young as well, you know. Not yeah, quite anime, I mean, Scotty Young just not... all covers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I collect how, them. How many... <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, you've got Derek Robertson, right? So, you know, yeah, his style is quite loose as well. Very indie-ish compared to what you see, you know, when you're looking at something like... Oh, that feels U a, UK style state. to me. That's a British style as well. So yeah, yeah. that's what I see when I see it. Um, but I don't think Derek is British, is he? He is. Uh, isn't Derek? Uh, yeah, I think he's. I've met him a couple of um. Oh, shit, I met him the other year. But I don't know about his. But yeah, he, he, his stuff name. falls under the the. Um, there I, it is. I reckon the 2000 AD so, style of it. Yeah. yeah. So you know you've got. You know, it's quite different to what this used to be like, right? Yeah. And it used to be the standard. 
Yeah. And that's Avengers uh, number eight, annual number eight. So, but then you've got stuff like this from Derek. Yeah. And and then you're right. I think this is more very uh, because he's this is by Warren Ellis. It's very uh, 2018. I mean, you, you're correct on that, Rico. Was it? Did you say that? Because no, I think, no Mark said that it's a UK feel. Yeah. I got a UK yeah, feel from the app straight feel, away. I would say. <laughs> yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with it. I think we're all fans of the UK style, the manga style cartoons. Yeah. Like, I love it all, yeah. but like, it. You, you definitely, if you're a fan of it, you can look at it and go, mm, that looks, you know, it brings back those feelings. I, I remember as a kid, you know, the only things you saw in the uh, dairy was uh, probably 2000 AD and then you'd get yeah. Buster, <laughs> Wizard, <laughs> Connell Duck. You know, the only comics you could really get was, um, oh. yeah, Junie <laughs> for girls. Jesus, and 2080 for guys. Yeah, oh, but I, I was oh, really uh, scared of 2080 as a kid, seeing it on the shelf. Like, oh, oh, that's too much. I don't want to. It's gritty. You know. Yeah, I'm talking when I was like seven or eight, mind you. you know? Yeah, I wasn't talking about like the 80s when um the only only comics and dairies were like GI Joe, which I and Transformers and stuff. Oh, Action yeah. Force. Action yep. Force. Bloody hell. Yeah, that's one of our um, our Rises and Comics UK division does that. Yeah, yeah, we do that out of um, the U uh, U um, the UK division. So I mean, this is the thing that I like. So this thing um, the other week with Jerry Conway hating on because he doesn't understand the actual art form and he thinks it's just oh it's it's for kids, just like just like comics used to be, you know, just for kids. His concept of manga. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, kid. and we're yeah. kids, and that's fine, you know. Yeah. But like, it's like <laughs> comics are for everybody and anyone. Yeah, you know. And I think people, when they start saying, "Oh, you gotta like this, and you can't like that," it's like, well, you just stop talking because you don't understand that the fact that it's literature and art, and you yeah. can't so tell Vegemite people. And Marmite. Yeah, you well, can't I think, tell. I think people what to comics are yeah. like movies. They're they're an escape. You know, like you're finding it's, a different world and you're jumping into it. Yeah. It's okay not to like everything, but if you don't like my shit, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is this is one of ours from Rising Sun Comics, right? Yeah. Black and white. So it's then you've got Iron Hill. You've got you've got Black Lotus Empire, and which is in basically full color. And then you've got the other one, which is Collapse, which is just black and white. So you're gonna say, well, I like color. Oh, well, sorry, wrong page. I like color more than like black and white. That's basically saying, you know, I can't decide. Uh, this is okay because you like color. You can't write black and white, or if you like black and white, you you can't like color. It's like it is. I think your... color adds to it, though. I mean, black and white can oh, do yeah. it in certain things. Like real artists can do a fantastic job with black and white, but. Yes. In my mind, color is like a whole nother level, and so if someone's good at color, is going to yeah, be. I, and I think there's an unfortunate um, mindset or aesthetic that because it doesn't have color, it might be cheaper. Well, that's just incorrect. I mean, you know, it does save you some money when you're making the thing, but yeah, you know, sometimes things, uh, you know, 2008 was black and white for years with a lot of it. Yeah, you know, did half the page, half the page yeah. of black and white, half of them in color. You know, mm. um, I. Yeah, I, I just think that I think initially the per, the perception would be well, I'm paying this, I should be getting this, but people don't understand the the art enough, the art form enough to see what people are yeah. trying to do with it. So yeah, it's it's an interesting challenge for people who aren't are new to comics to wrap mm. their heads around. Um, but you know, you look at uh, manga and stuff. You know, that's ninety nine yep. percent of it, black and white. So. Well it's basically a black and white art form you know yeah. because uh, because you only got the one or two guys doing it you got the writer and the artist or you got the artist mm -hmm. who's doing both right yeah yeah and he's putting out things, though, he's putting out something like seven pages shots. a week and he's trying to you know to go shut and jump get that seven pages a week thing happening each you know a chapter a week to get to that freaking one month thing slot where he's putting the whole book out i think uh I think it's it's kind of like for me. I think that the uh, the trying to pu push a divide between 
and a manga and con is dead mm. because all you're doing is saying they're better than us or they're worse than us so yeah. you must like us or the other way around it's just causing division that isn't necessary and the, and the outcome of that is a dead mainstream comic society one thing that's really prevalent in manga at the moment it's interesting because i've tried to join a few manga groups as well mm. just uh you know wondered if they'd be interested in my book or not and mm. uh they've, they are hugely tolerant these are fans they're hugely oh, yeah. tolerant of pirating stuff they yeah. openly talk about so it's that's that's a real hard thing at the moment because you see uh I, Touch wood, my books haven't. Uh, oh no, the Miller World Annual got torrented and got. It's been read by uh, 150,000 people or something like that. Yeah. Um, but those 150,000 people won't even freaking even decide to buy, go into a comic and buy your comic. No, no, they won't. So right? it's, it's a hard They'll be on Twitter saying, hey, 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 you know, you should have had this in your book. You should have had yeah, this in like, your book. Did you buy it? But they won't yeah. buy it. Uh, take it up your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really bad. And I, I'm surprised actually since Disney. I know like these sites are in like Russia or bloody Czechoslovakia or wherever they are. Mm. But I'm surprised Disney's lawyers and between Disney, Disney and Warner Brothers, I'm surprised they haven't gotten their shit together and really gone hard to clamp these things down. Uh, but manga is like you get your web teams as well. There's obviously um, uh, yeah. Oh gosh, what's her name? Uh, she lives in Auckland. Oh, uh, web teams got bought out by uh, a Korean uh, multi like billionaire industry thing and so yep. webtoons is now producing uh animes and live action shows yep. because that's yep. and uh, they're, they're printing um original uh hard covers now as well yeah uh, gosh what is her name uh, it's a kiwi artist and her book is laura olympus mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's amazing. Like um, she, she's discovered an audience. I think she's one of the third or fourth. What well, we got? Five million subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, Rachel Smith. Yeah, so mm. she, she's churning it out every week. She's doing a really good job. Mm. Um, not my cup of tea, the book, but I mean the, the style that's, of what she does. It. I, I like. That's I like it. It's like it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. It is somebody else's. Yeah. So, but yeah. what she's what she's done, she's consistent with her art and the story mm. structure. It's consistent from episode to episode. They call them instead of issues. Mm. And uh, yeah, good, good on her. I did. I sneakily sent her an email, asked her if she wanted to do a pin up for this land. Never mm. heard back. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be cheeky. I was lucky enough. Um, I got Gora. Gora I've got another book uh, coming out in October. I got Gora on Parlog. Uh, who does Punisher and Starlight with Mark Miller for Miller World? Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he's, no, done, he's, he's, done a, he's done a cover for us, which is amazing. So I can't wait to share that. So touch wood. He's Croatian, isn't stuff he? Like that. Goran. What's that? Goran's actually uh, Croatian, and I know him through another yeah. friend who yeah, I talk yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a yeah. Um, stroke about a year ago, uh, but he's doing well. So yeah, we met him at uh, Glasgow Comic Con, and um, we were there. Like, it was really weird because. Uh, uh he was just kind of sitting to himself smoking away and having his cappuccinos and uh me and the missus sat down just we don't know who he was just sat down and started talking shit with him mm. and uh yeah we've been buddies ever since so uh yeah he was very kind enough to do that for us and um mm. i think i even got it's funny this comics is a very sharing community and you know you can network with people all over yeah. the place um like it's zach howard who did uh venom in the last hellboy story he did uh, this pin up for us nice uh, that's nice yeah where it is yeah so that was um that was on the back of he was doing a comic book on webtoons for common the rapper yeah and common was this sort of james bondish spy who came to new zealand so he needed yeah. someone who knew a bit about Taleo and sense checks and so mm. my mate verona who helped me out with this uh i put him onto her, her yeah i put him onto her and he helped her out and now she's she's like she's in the credits so like says common created by common and gerald butler as well for some reason <laughs> and so her name's down there and so he as a thank you he did a pin-up for us i was like yes mm. <laughs> it's the same thing fucking money there because that would have been about a thousand pounds easy well, that um, is the difference so that's why like when i i get a bit pissed off when people start throwing off on you know trying to divide the community because i think it's yeah. like you can't have that in a community like comics where we grew up with this shit since we we're eight-year-olds 
and we're ostracized as comic readers when we're eight years old as 15 yeah. year olds and then now you want to do the same and when, when we're in our 40s and 50s as within, well yeah there's no point yeah. dividing people up <laughs> yeah and it's like you're there now we're, it's our thing now because we watch the movie it's like yeah but we spent 30 40 years of our lives with this and now we're the hip crew because you watch the movie and i think that's that's pretty sad because i think for us as creatives it's like please just buy our read our book yeah I think one big thing that's always annoyed me is how um, Marvel and DC have not put at the end of their uh, movies, go to a comic book shop. Just follow the They don't care, the man. They However, don't care. So one thing did happen recently. So Hulu just released MODOK, which is on <laughs> Disney Plus World. Oh, yeah. Uh, the creators of MODOK, Pat and Oswald, and I think Jason something, I can't remember his last name, they've just written a MODOK story with Marvel hmm. on Hulu. And I know this because I was dodgy and I did pirate it because I wanted to see the whole season, even though oh, I was look, look. Yep. At the end of each episode, they say- Shall we, shall we call it Marvel and call them Chase You Down? Read our story at the, there's a, there's a whole title card that says, for yep. more MODOK, go to your comic book show and get this by the creators of the MODOK series. Hmm. They cut it from Disney yep. Plus. It's on Hulu, which is owned oh, by Disney. Oh, that's Media. weird. But they it's, cut that look, title card on Disney Plus, and, and I can't for the life of me figure it out. And I've asked the because question because they don't care about the comics; they care about but, the IP, they care about adapting um, adaptation of it. They care about the billions they can make off the creators who created it, but not pay them a cent or so. Look, look at um, that is work for hire. So I mean, Brubaker, oh yeah, but um, hold on. Um, but when someone, you sign a work for hire contract, it pretty much says it's just work for hire. No, so, somebody um, somebody said something about Avengers, and he got paid more for uh, something yeah, Ed, like Ed Brubaker appearance. Ed Brubaker appeared in Winter uh, Soldier. He appeared yeah. in Winter Soldier. He got more for being in the background than he did for creating the character. But again, yeah. he signed a work for hire contract. It's right that there. It still so. doesn't like at least give him the freaking credit. Oh no, like, he's in the credits. He's in the credits. Yeah, but what I mean is like, look, when you this is the problem I have with Hollywood, and I've done filmmaking, so I have. An understanding yeah. of the, the whole industry as much as I can, as my brain would handle it. The idea is that they take what you create, and the hair, star of the movie, and the director and the producers get all the money for what you've created, the idea and the IP that you've come with, the world you've built, the costumes you created, the hours and hours and hours you've spent designing that world. Yeah, and then they go, director of. Uh, such and such, producer or exec, and you got 10, 20 uh, executives, yeah. they get all the cash cow from this billions of dollars they make, and what do you get? Uh, Maybe you get about a $10,000. You're, you're talking about like just it. about anything though. But <laughs> that's the way, that's the way the world that, works. That, that adds <laughs> up to your contract. But the uh, what, the so thing is do. that there's no, um, there's no balance to it, and then you got all these people that are going, let's support Disney, let's support Disney, let's support AATT Warners. It's like, yeah. dude, you, you, <laughs> see, you, see, you see what's going on still after so many years with this. Yeah. You, oh, you yeah, still yeah, see yeah. what's going on with this. Yeah. He, he and these are the same through, people yeah. who say we should support these companies. So like, yeah, uh, right. But in a way, why, as a creator, why, why? creating something great <laughs> like that is the gift, isn't it? Like making the really? product and having it in so the public. You want to tell well, those people, Schuster. You want to tell that a to lot Jerry of people Andy? are driven by the creation of first. Yeah. Like, but I mean, it, it's not it, all it about money. Depends. Yeah, if but you, you still have, have a we're not communists property. here, are we, Rico? If, if, if you have a creator owned property and you yeah. look at Mark Miller, so he kept his rights and he sold yeah. it all to Netflix and he made a shitload yeah. of money and he's involved, he's executive presser. But it's yeah. ultimately up to what your decision is. So I talked earlier about. I yeah. wouldn't mind maybe Scholastic having the That's what I was going to get back to. But on that topic, I would yeah. keep the media rights. So it's the same thing. I have a, I've got a, um, oh God, what is he called? A rep. I do have uh -huh. a rep, rep for the book agent. Rights, but he oh, agent. Right. I've got a publishing agent for the book rights. Yeah. But he ha he does not have control of the media rights. Mm. And because he, they've just, and the main reason for that is they would, um, they would take the book and they would build a package uh, around and then go pitch it off to Hollywood, which they've actually successfully done with uh, a UK book called Cooltopia. And I said yeah. to him, there's no way I'm having two, you know, 
there's yeah. no way of having two white boys from Glasgow doing a media pitch for this land. Yeah. It's just, you've got, because it, it, abs- you have absolutely, you'd have no integrity about it because right. you have no idea what this is actually about beyond the, there's levels there that you know, and they were happy with that. So, yeah. So, I, we're talking about that. Uh, in 2018, I did a, uh, a spec script, totally outline a movie, right? Based around my character, uh, uh, this uh, co- co-written character, um, designed, um, created by me, designed and co-created by uh, my friend Shane Evans, local artist. So we did a, a one of our because our our company is um, Rising Comics, our parent company, which I'm a co-director of. There's four of us, but I have forty, you know, shares and whatever. So we, I was asked to, hey, can you, because you're in Fungare, I said it's got beautiful area. You want to write a spec script around this thing because we've got to deal with a you know someone who's interested in doing some filmmaking in New Zealand. Yeah. And I said, okay, cool. So I spent whew, two weeks hard out plotting out, going back on my old stories about an SAS officer that I was doing, which Red Dot is right. So Red Dot's yeah. an SS, SAS officer, Kiwi, right? Did this whole story about a Midwest female in her 30s 20s coming to new zealand and hooking up with this uh married boy right uh red dot and so we did a skip spec we said we got we're gonna we've got hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand dollars we can put into it we'll you know you put in another i think it was hundred twenty five thousand so it was about two fifty thousand us we could put into it okay we put it was put out there had nothing about it last year a movie called uh holiday in or something in showed up out of the blue same concept same outline so whoever saw it through this other company basically took it to another company the idea and boom there's a movie made yeah. so this is why i'm very hesitant to see things that you know, people create suddenly get taken out of their hands and be yeah. be out there like that because yeah. I think and, and you and you're right. That's a very common thing to happen yeah. in Hollywood. A lot of stuff like that happens, um, and yeah, it's unfortunate and it's the hardest thing, especially when you're so far away from it all, to have yeah. the right people on your side fighting for you and getting the right people involved. Mm. Um, you know, this is it. Like when 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 the trades finished. I know I'll be mailing it to certain folk that I know mm. I can trust. Um, yeah. New Zealand's a small place, and I know a few people through a few people, so that's good. Mm. Um, and I think, in my case, it's quite a particular script, and I don't think you know, it'd have to be done from New Zealand. You know, yeah. um, just before the um, the culture and stuff evolved in it and the location, so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it all works out, guys. I got to run. Actually, I didn't realize it's ten to ten here, so uh, I've got. That's cool. Uh, I'll, I'll carry on. My one. Cool hearing okay. about your work, man. It's great. Just we take off, and we'll definitely Just catch up again. Off, Mark. Thanks I'll for being on the group, people. man. Like, it's awesome yeah, having man. you. Yeah. Well, thank Just you for you listening off. to me talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just before you take off, question. Oh no. Because it looks like a uh, very animated looking uh not yeah. very but slight animated looking have you thought about doing like uh getting someone to do like a three minute uh uh specs uh not back but like a you know a store uh like um animation as a I trailer mean, you've done that. my trailers for kickstarter have a little bit of stuff like that mm. it's oh, not really? full yeah um not full on but a yep. little bit of um face subtle animation yeah, yeah, the face AI and stuff. So it does it, it yeah. does enough to get get it across. Um, yeah, but I'm, but I'm thinking about is... the whole thing, like a manga oh, no, kind so, of thing. So, and here's the other thing why I want to keep the rights. I fully believe mm. within the next 10 years, I will have the ability to do it myself mm. by scanning and wireframing everything, all the character designs. I'm pretty yeah. sure the technology will get there where I can do the whole thing, create a, a five-part, 30-minute uh episode yeah. so that's i'm going to put a link here um, for I think, this i think we're very close to having access to this stuff already 
So, and the way technology evolves in so quickly, I don't, I don't see it being. Uh, I'm quite good with my IT stuff, so I'll train myself up to do it if I have to. It is amazing what you can do. You can wireframe yep. a lot and do oh. the motion capture and stuff. All have a look at the stuff, you know, um, your face tunes and your little bloody, you know, you're putting yourself over um, music videos and all that sort of crap, you know. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but if I'll you can put write some figures and then get some backgrounds done and you're away laughing. So, I mean, I, I'd be had to scan the whole book and, and just 3D out the whole thing. So, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging on to, that's another reason why I'm hanging on to meteorites. I've got a couple of people in New Zealand looking at it. Um, a couple of, uh, I won't say, people I went, New Zealand's a small place. We all know people, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's, it'll be interesting to see where we end up. But uh, must run, guys. And uh, I will ch catch up with you soon. And uh, I will definitely, I'm going to have a good look at your Rising Sun website and stuff. But uh, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good day, man. Bye.